Are you looking to grow revenues, increase profitability, or obtain financing? If so, you came to the right place. Running a business is all about leadership. How do you become a better leader? Learn from the successful entrepreneurs and business owners how to lead your organization more effectively. That's why we created Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business, to help you succeed with your host, Andrew Frazier, Business Growth Pro and CFO and founder of the Small Business Pro University. Every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're joined by experienced entrepreneurs and business owners who share their secrets to success via live stream. Also, every Friday morning, we release a new podcast episode. Either way, you will learn about developing your business leadership skills from our roster of highly performing guest experts. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com. Good evening and welcome to Leadership Live at 805 Talking Small Business. I'm your host, Andrew Frazier, and excited to be here once again, hanging out with you, talking small business, my favorite topic. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about a very important piece to being able to successfully scale your business. Um, you know, in my books and um, in a lot of my coaching and consulting, one of the key things is you know, getting to the point where you can scale your business, where you can create a business that can run without you. And this is the linchpin or the key to being able to do that. Um, that's why the topic tonight is called 2IC is the key. So if you don't know what 2IC is, um, now you're going to know. But you're going to have to wait a few more minutes to really uh, – officially know what it is, but um, thanks for joining. Um, definitely excited to have a great group. Um, hey, Maria, welcome back. And um, definitely, um, you know, want to get started. Um, my guest tonight is Neil Livingstone, and he's a CFO, um, a coach. Um, he does great things. Um, and he's on the other side of the world. He's out of Australia and um, I'm excited to be able to talk to him and have him share his expertise with us. Hey, Neil, how are you doing today? Uh, hi, Andrew. Yes, yeah, in the it's morning time here in Sydney, Australia. I'm, I'm doing great. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome to Leadership Live at 805, talking small business. Um, definitely you've worked with a lot of businesses and done a lot of the great things. So um, I know you have some tremendous things to share with the audience. So, um, so definitely looking forward to that. So, um, before we get started, why don't you take a minute and just, um, talk a little bit about your journey, you know, where'd you come from? How did you get where you are? Why are you where you are? And what are some of the key milestones and learnings you had in the process? Yeah, I'd love to do that, but uh, I guess I've I've got to uh, not let people hang on any longer. So 2IC stands for second in charge, which I'm sure we'll talk about um, after I do my intro. But, yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm obviously from uh, Australia. My parents uh, uh, came out here from Scotland. And my journey uh, in business started uh, working for my parents who were entrepreneurs. We uh, grew up in um, country uh, Australia and uh, we owned a toy shop um, so I worked in my mum and dad's toy shop uh, right the way uh, through my schooling years uh, you know after school and I didn't really know it at
Okay. Hey, Neil, looks like you may have gotten frozen a little bit. Uh, he should be back shortly, but, you know, like a lot of business owners, um, you know, there's some entrepreneurial experience um, when you're young. And, um, yeah, definitely, I'm sure he's learned a lot as a kid. Um, so he should be back in a second. Um, so let's talk about um, the topic is, to IC, you know, he mentioned that's a, a second in command. Um, and really, um, you know, to IC being a second in command um, is a key piece to, to moving your business forward. Um, Neil, we lost you, but now you're back. Um, you want to pick up where you were? Where did you lose me? Um, well, you talked about being in. Um, your parents being having a toy shop. toy shop. Yeah, yeah. So after that, I worked with uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Um, uh, very, very different business. I worked with them all around the world, um, in Europe, in the States, in Australia, in New Zealand. Um, but they had one thing in common with my mum and dad's toy shop business is that they're very people focused. So the first two businesses I worked for, uh, I learned a lot about. Um, high performance uh, building building teams. Uh, I didn't really realize it at my time because I was in my teens and my 20s, but that was an amazing start to my career. Uh, and when I got into my 30s, I moved out into the corporate world into um, CFO roles. Uh, and that's when I realized that it wasn't common um, uh, for a business to uh, do really well at building uh, fantastic teams and uh, uh, now that I'm a business coach that's pretty much the number one thing I help people uh, with is surround themselves uh, with a great team uh, because that is the foundation block for really breaking through that glass ceiling so a lot of business owners are very successful initially at what they do um, and that's because uh, they're fantastic at the service they provide uh, or the product that they sell, um, uh, but then they typically run into a, what I call a glass ceiling. Uh, they might earn a little bit of profit, but they really struggle to break through that $1 million, $2 million profit level um, and, and achieve that su the success that everyone, you know, really wants. Uh, and, and the secret to that is building a good team around you. And I think the secret to that is having a fantastic two IC. Excellent. So, you know, having a fantastic two IC, um, you know, I, I, I see it as well. Um, it can be challenging hiring the right people. Um, and then once you have the right people, pulling together a team. Um, so definitely look forward to digging into, you know, how to do that more successfully. But before we do that, just going to take a quick commercial. We do this show through our Small Business Pro University. So here's a quick 60 seconds on what that is all about. Do you own your business or does it own you? Is your business growing and are you making enough oh. money? As a business owner, there are so many things you need to know to become more successful. Hello. My name is Andrew Frazier, the Business Growth Pro and CFO. I created the Small Business Pro University for you. Small Business Pro University has self-paced, dynamic, multimedia learning experiences created by more than 20 instructors who are business owners just like you. Small Business Pro University will empower you to become a masterpreneur by learning the secrets to creating a successful enterprise to go from working in your business to working on your business. Take advantage of our strategic coaching program or just simply choose the courses that you need at www.sbprou.com. We will empower you to thrive and not just survive and make more money in any business environment. Okay, welcome back to Leadership Live. I'm here with Neil Livingstone and we're going to talk about why 2IC is the key. So, you said that 2IC is your second in command. And, you know, that's a key to being able to build the leadership team that you need. So, um, 
talk a little bit about kind of why that is and what they do for your organization. Yeah. So yeah, I've been in business now for many, many years, and um, uh, I've learned I've learned this through the course of my uh, working with many businesses that the businesses that really uh, get through that uh, glass ceiling uh, have a two IC. And also, when you look at um, some of the well-known, uh, very successful, you know, people uh, in the world, uh, Warren Buffett's a a great example. He's got a fantastic two IC, Charlie Munger, um, and I could go on. You know, Bill Gates, uh, almost Richard Branson, almost uh, any of these very well-known, uh, wealthy, successful business people, um, all had either co-partners or two ICs. Not all of them had them from the start. Uh, some did, uh, but they they found they found the the yin and yang relationship uh, that comes with. Uh, um, a founder at a 2IC fairly fairly early on. Um, and what a 2IC really, the right 2IC, and I'll, I'll talk about what I think uh, a 2IC needs to bring to the table. Um, but if you can get the right 2IC, um, your business invariably takes off. And I've, I've seen this time and time again, because what it does, it allows the owner to focus on, uh, or the founder to focus on, um what they're really good at so typically a 2ic or a good 2ic will complement uh your skills your skill set most founders and owners uh their core skill set is um, being expert at the service they provide or the product that they sell uh, this is a generalization it's not always true and w where their weak spots typically are are in uh, people management um, and, and sometimes leadership uh, because I just haven't had that experience. Uh, and and uh, sometimes they've also got weaknesses in administration and organization um, and also sometimes in marketing. So a 2IC uh, will typically be very, very good communicator. Um, and they'll be very, very good at working with people. People intuitively like them uh, and uh, trust them. Uh, so that, that means that they can, uh, they're good at uh, recruiting uh, and training and retaining people. Uh, for me, that is the number one thing that almost every two I see that, uh, that slots in well to a business it needs to have. Um, and then they can typically have a secondary skill set uh, that they're good at, that the business owner is not uh, naturally strong in. And it could be any of those areas that I just uh, mentioned. And the, so, so when I uh, talk to business owners for the first time, it's almost the first question I ask them every time when I, li I obviously listen to where they're at uh, in their business. But you know, w once I understand their situation, their history, where they think they're at. That's normally my first question, which is, tell me about your team. Um, tell me, uh, you know, do you think you have a good team? Where are your weak spots? And do you have a 2IC? And do you even know what a 2IC is? Most people do. Um, and I talk to them about the concept of that. And almost immediately that concept, people intuitively understand that that's the right way to go. Uh, sometimes they will their response might be i would love to do that neil but i don't have budget for that um, which happens of course uh, if you're at an early early stage in your growth and that's where i break down um what the components or, or the different options you have around a 2ic because a 2ic does not need to be a full-time person it does not need to be you know someone with uh, years and years of experience that you know commands a relatively high salary. Um, when you're starting out, a 2IC can be uh, a part-time person um, that uh, has a few years experience, but they're naturally good with people. You know, that this is the key thing that you need. So uh, I've seen um, businesses hire um, mums that come back from work that do have quite a bit of experience. They just had a child or two. They wanna work school hours. They come in part-time. 
They love working with people. They're very social. They're good with people. They're great communicators. And they make an in instant and incredible difference to that business. They organize the team. They recruit the team. They manage the team um, in a way that the owner you know, hasn't previously been able to do. So you can bring in a 2IC um, for a relatively you know, low amount, probably the same cost as uh, you know, uh, a receptionist, a full-time receptionist. So um, it's definitely possible. Um, and usually I'll have a discussion uh, and, and right fit what a 2IC, I think a 2IC would look like in their business you know, uh, to their budget. Um, and that usually gets people excited because they intuitively understand that the value of, of personal that, that would bring. And then we immediately focus on where we're going to find that person. Uh, which is a whole nother discussion. Okay, okay. So, you know, one of the things I, I find, and you probably do as well, is, you know, when business owners hire people, you know, a lot of people don't make it um, because either not good recruiting practices, mm -hmm. not good onboarding practices, not um, support once someone's there, Mm. maybe not even having the right culture. Mm. Um, so, you know, before you hire to IC, what kind of things do you need to put in place to ensure that someone can be successful within your organization? I love that question, Andrew. Uh, clearly, you know what you're doing and you've been in this situation before. It's um, good people uh, that, Here's the truth. Good people are attracted to uh, good organizations and good organizations are led by a good person, you know. Um, so there's no getting around that. A 2IC um, will very much help that situation. But if the, the founder and the business owner um, is not setting the right leadership tone, not setting the right culture in the business, that is going to make it very difficult to find and attract good people. Um, so that needs to be put on the table, I think, uh, up front. Um, you know, uh, if, if, that, if I work for a, a business owner, I will very quickly say, look, um, leadership is very, very important. Culture is very, very important. Um, I'll get their take on that. And if I think uh, that they're, they've got some some development to do i'll be very very upfront about that um uh, that is the number one determinant in uh, whether you're going to be able to find and keep a, a really good team including a 2ic so relatively easy to fix if that person is open to uh you know accepts that and is open to learning and growing uh and then once that um, you know, once that is uh, in the right ready state, if you like, um, uh, it, it is about uh, running a really, really good recruitment and onboarding process. Um, and there's no, and it has to be authentic. You know, you need to, you need to um, build your business in a way that it's going to attract quality individuals uh, and, and quality individuals um they don't grow on trees they're smart and they will very quickly work out whether your organization is an organization they want to they want to work or, or or stay stay working with okay all right well i know there's a, a saying that people don't leave companies they leave people so That's true. you know if you're if you have a lot of people leaving your organization you may want to take a look at what's going on and what you're doing so um yeah. and you know definitely culture is important um now i don't know about you but i run into a lot of ceos that don't even know what culture is and don't even realize it's their responsibility so how do you explain to them what culture is and what they're supposed to do what their role is in terms of the culture yeah so you, you and I, I think, operate in similar spaces, Andrew. And, you know, most of the time, the businesses that we talk to, 
are at the early stage or mid mid stage of their development. So I typically don't use the word culture so much. I use the word leadership. Uh, that seems to resonate with business owners that are in that stage. Obviously, in larger corporations like when I work with PricewaterhouseCoopers and other large corporations, culture is always talked about. Um, but for me, when 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 the organisation is smaller, it, culture really is uh, uh, almost synonymous with the leadership uh, that comes from the business owner. Um, so I talk about that, and I and I, I just give examples of um, how leadership can make a difference uh, versus examples of leadership, no leadership or bad leadership that um, you know produces obviously um, negative outcomes. And in my experience, most people get that. You know, uh, they may not get it um, before we talk or before we work, but they, it's intuitively common sense um, and they get that. Um, and when I talk about that with business owners, you can see them nodding in recognition that they know it's, they know it's true and it's just a matter of whether they're going to make the commitment to themselves to go along the journey to, you know, uh, improve their leadership skills um, and take their business to the next level. And that usually comes back to how motivated and how badly they they want that outcome. Uh, that's 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 usually the the key determinant whether um, they put in enough time and investment to get to get to financial freedom okay all right no no and that makes sense and you know with that you know as a ceo or owner you know the role is really difficult because you know you have to evolve throughout the process and your business can only go as far as you're prepared to take it so if you get stagnant um then that's going to you know, stagnate the whole organization. Um, so, you know, part of coaching is trying to get them, you know, unstuck and to evolve, but you can't do it for them. Um, so what are some of the places and things that you see people getting stuck on and how do you help them overcome? Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's primarily a mindset thing. So when I meet a lot of business owners, um, they've, they've got a little bit stuck um, and the journey has got a lot harder than they envisaged. They've enjoyed some success, which has created problems. Now, problems out of success are usually good problems to have, but only if you have the right skill set to fix that. And, and they try and fix it themselves. Um, they realise that they uh, aren't an expert in in those areas that they need to get the outcomes that they want, and then it, then it becomes a question of whether or not they can find the right people to help them. Um, so it's definitely a mindset, and the mindset that really tricks people up is uh, I'm not good with people. Um, I've been doing this for three years, I, or however many years I I've tried to surround myself with. Uh, good people or even one good person or a two I see or uh, and they keep leaving on me and uh, I don't know why uh, so they've just sort of almost raised the white flag and given up um, and said I I'm just no good with people um, so that's that's the number one uh, thing that I run into and so it's just a question of then um, unpacking that with them uh, uh, helping them uh, see the detail and the journey around why they've come to that conclusion, uh, and then talking about um, how I've seen other business owners, uh, with or without my help, uh, overcome that mindset uh, and uh, slowly turn that mindset around and start really building a really good team around them. It's not. Uh, it's never. It's never easy. Or almost never easy. It's a a two-step forward, one-step back journey as a rule, and sometimes it's more steps back. I've got a client that I've been working with at the moment. I was on the phone to her last night, and um, she had two people resign on her 
uh, two really good people uh, resigned on her yesterday. We've been building the team very, very well uh, for over a year now. Um, but you just have these setbacks um, and you just need to trust the process, trust the mindset that you're operating with, uh, make sure that your recruitment processes are super solid. A lot of people um, don't, uh, there, are, there are nine recruitment channels. Uh, I'm happy to go through those in detail if you want, but uh, the, the, the two that people use the most are recruitment agents and online recruitment sites. They are both good, um, but in today's digital economy, um, they that you're lucky if that uh, covers 50% uh, of the total, um, you know, uh, candidate pool. Um, so you've really got to thoroughly um, run a, a decent recruitment process. Okay. Well, what what are the others? Because I, I think that would be helpful for people to know. I'm glad you asked. I've just got them written down next to me here. I've actually uh, got an ebook as well that goes through all of this in detail. But the nine channels are obviously recruitment agents, uh, online recruitment sites, um, social media, um, referrals. Uh, and referrals are, I guess, in two parts. They're employee referrals and what I call your power base or customer referrals. Um, there's LinkedIn. Now, people... Most people uh, really don't understand the power of LinkedIn when it comes to both um, recruitment um, and and also lead generation. Um, emails or, or your or your list, um, your your own website uh, or your landing pages. Uh, PR P, PR is a very underutilized channel for recruitment, um, and obviously podcasts like we're, uh, we're doing now. So they're the nine channels. And what I find uh, works nowadays is, uh, now not all nine will be relevant for every single business, but certainly I find that there's five, six, seven, eight or nine that are in, in each situation. And when you um, do those together at one time, which is what I call a, um, a multi-channel approach, that is what works today. You know, people need to see uh, see you, your business, um, I- I through multiple channels, and and when they do that, you're you're naturally elevated to the top of their curiosity list. They they, they assume because they've seen you in multiple channels that you are a good business, um, and um, they they take action uh, to to contact you. And then the secondary stage after that is when they uh, do contact you, the experience that they have, both in terms of um, the video content and the content that you're putting out uh, and any communication, particularly, you know, um, uh, over Zoom or face-to-face, needs to be top, top shelf. So if you can do that, you will you will naturally put yourself to the top of the queue. You will get more... Um, response and then you will appeal to um the high quality candidates okay no that that's great to keep in mind you know the first thing a lot of people do is go to recruiters and online services but you know for a small business you know that can be fairly expensive and not really productive uh, because so you know, especially a lot of times, those are the candidates that want to make the most money. And as a small business, a lot of times you can't pay as much as other firms. So, you know, you have, but you have other things to offer. And some of the other ways um, you may get access to better candidates for your situation. Yeah, I, just two two points on that, Andrew. That the number one most successful tool that um, you can use in pretty much all of those nine channels is video content. Okay, mm. so if you shoot a uh, two to five minute uh, video about your company, why people uh, like working for your company, and this video needs to be not you speaking, 
uh, or certainly you as a business owner, not for more than 15 seconds, 20 seconds, these are your employees talking, right? So typically I, w- you know, I will line up four, five, six, seven employees. I won't tell them what we're doing. So it, the content is, you know, uh, natural. Uh, and then I will you know, record about uh, 30 second grabs uh, of each employee. And we're really asking them, why do you enjoy working where, where you work? And it's uncanny um, what they say. It's almost uh, always pretty much the same thing. Okay. Um, and those videos absolutely cut through um, all the other noise uh, out there. Um, it's It comes across as very genuine. And you can put that on your website. You can put that in your uh, links to in your ads. Uh, you can put it in your LinkedIn. You can put, you can put it in all nine channels. Um, and that is the number one thing that makes people high quality people uh, respond. Um, uh, and the other thing that I was going to say, Andrew, is the other key to successfully recruiting um, good people. A lot of people during uh, interviews. Uh, focus their questions on uh, the technical aspects of the job. Um, And I think that's a mistake. Um, Technical aspects of a job um, can be learned. And I I don't look for, a lot of people look for someone with relevant experience in this. I just want someone because they they don't want to train people. Uh, For me, it's not about the technical experience. That, That helps and it's great. But what I'm looking for, number one, is something that connects me, the business owner, to um, the employee, right? So if we can get alignment on something uh, that they want and I want, this is the key. And typically, uh, I'll, I'll just unpack that a little bit, but typically they are people that are self uh, highly motivated, uh-huh. Um uh, th- these are people you can align with, right? So if, if someone is is lazy or is not motivated, it's very hard to find something that 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 can you know um, mutually attract both of you. Right? So in an interview, I'm focused on questions that uh, are trying to find out what drives the person. Right? Now I'll give you an example. When I was 18, I joined Price Coopers. Um, I was not interested in money. I was, it was early in my career. What I was interested in, the, the, the ultimate prize for me um, was to um, get some experience over the, the first three or four years uh, as I was doing my qualifications, um, uh, but get a posting overseas. Uh, and I wanted to go to London. My, my parents are Scottish. I've got a British passport. That was that was the, the holy grail for me. Um, and... PwC understood that immediately, uh, and, ev- and and all the discussion was around aligning what they wanted from me uh, with with what I wanted. Um, so um, you know that's just one example, but you know uh, highly motivating successful people want money, absolutely, and that is a good thing. You can align people around money, but they typically also want um, to uh, grow themselves, uh, to learn. Um, to en- enhance their CV, um, that depend varies a little bit depending on people's age. Um, they may want to, they may value very uh, highly working with an entrepreneur or the business owner. Um, don't underestimate how important that is for some people. So, what an interview or recruitment process for me is, um, there are again about nine or ten. Um, uh, key areas that people highly value. Money is one. I've mentioned a few of the others. And it's probing the people in a really collaborative and positive way. It's um, until you hit the jackpot. And the jackpot is what is their number one thing that drives them. And you know when you hit it because they their energy goes up, their passion goes up, they, they talk a lot. Uh, and then when you hit that, that's what you talk about for the rest of the conversation. And that's what you build your offer around and your alignment around. Uh, and so, so that's, that's if you can do that during the interview, um, that's a really good start uh, for a great journey, uh, you know, between employer, employee, um, 
and a lot of people don't do that in, in, in interviews. Okay. Okay. No, that, that makes sense. So really building a relationship and sort of a, a, a tie so that um, there's more than just, you know, doing the work and making money. Yeah, everyone is interested in themselves. I call that WIFM, uh, WIFM yep. FM, uh, what's in it for me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone is built like this. Uh, so it is about finding a place where you can align what's in it for them to what's in it for you. And and if I don't feel that I've done that in an interview, I won't hire the person because I know the outcome is going to be bad for them and bad for me. Okay. All right. Oh, definitely, definitely a good point. So, you know, one thing, I, you know, in, um, you know, in my first book, one of the chapters was called, um, is it me or are my employees crazy? And, um, you know, really, you know, dealing with personnel can be very challenging for a lot of business owners. And, yeah. You know, many times you uh, want to blame it on your employees. Um, but, you know, my premise is, you know, really, you you own the company, you own the decisions, you, you own the culture. Um, you know, if things aren't going the way you want it to, it's really because of your decisions. Um, and you have to own it and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, you also have to fix it if there's a problem. So, um, yep. so how, how do people, how do you help people fix problems? You know, I'm sure you go in and there's organizations where it just, there's, a, you know, a lot of tension or not very aligned on things you know how do you um, help them work through that situation yeah it's a little bit horses for courses and i agree with you by the way um i said earlier a lot of the people i meet have i'm bad with people uh other people i meet who i don't work with generally as a rule will say um all my people are crap um the, the youth of today or the people of today that so, so they're not they're not taking ownership so i very very quickly put that on the table that the common denominator is them and if they want to work with me uh they need to take responsibility for that uh and 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 there, there will no there'll be no change to their circumstances until they do that so i i i, I sort of handle handle that up front and then in terms of the next steps um a little bit horses for courses so i'll give you an example of uh what i've done in a, a medium-sized business um so i've been working with them for a number of years but um their sales team when i first started working uh were very unmotivated um uh they weren't doing the activities um uh and uh, you know so really, I, I had adopted a, a show them strategy as opposed to teach them. Um, and there are two strategies. There's, there's teach and there's, there's show. Um, show is quicker and takes a bit more time, but um, the, the business owner was happy to in, invest in that strategy. So I managed as a CFO the sales team, which is a bit unusual. Um, but instead of being instructional, uh, I brought them all together. Uh, and I said, uh, I, want, I don't think uh, we are serving you. We're not giving you what you need to do your jobs effectively. Uh, and I want you to tell me what you need. Um, so we spent two days. We locked ourselves up in a room. And we came up with a, a massive list of what we're not doing well. Um, and then over the next three months, um, we worked through methodically uh, every single point that the sales team raised that were problems. Um, and that was a very much a trust building um, uh, process. So we, you know, we, we, we did everything. We gave them more tools. We uh, invested in more technology. We had the business owner come out 
uh, and get in front of the customer with them more. You know, the list is endless what we did. Um, and they they engaged with that process. They loved that process. We got amazingly, at, we did surveys with the customers, both before and after. Uh, we got our after sales team to come out on site with the sales team. So we, we really let them tell us what was wrong. And then we said, we'll fix it. And we'll, we, we spent the time fixing it. Um, and, you know, so that was a, a show them how to lead, show them how to do it. And everyone bought in. And, and now we do an annual survey out to our customers and the sales team just can't wait to see what the, the results are. And anything that's subpar, they take quite personally. And we, we get around a table and, 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 and work out, you know, how, how we fix that. You know, so that's a, you know, that's one way of solving problems. Uh, I think that's showing a little bit of leadership. And through that process, the business owner who I, I've been working with him um, now for more than five years, he learned from what I showed him uh, how how to how to affect change and solve problems. Uh, and 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 the next time we challenge did the next challenge, I I led less and he led more. Um, so you know that's. That's, I think, you know, one way to do it. Uh, if if there's not enough investment or time available to do that, then it's it's coaching. You know, it's uh, tell me what how you would do it. Let's critique that. Let's look at some options around uh, how else you could do it, or how you could improve it or enhance it. Uh, and you know, as you go through that process, it's it's more about asking them what they think as opposed to me. Or, or someone that's helping, uh, that has a bit more experience, you know, spoon feed them. You know, it, it's it's it, it's it's getting them to uh, make decisions, uh, think things through logically, and and just uh, you know, micro correcting their their courses when their courseware, you know, they 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 misstep as everyone as everyone does. Okay, no, that makes sense. I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you've never seen anything before, you don't understand it. So, you know, talking about it still doesn't help you really understand it. You know, if, if you never saw an elephant yeah. and someone just explained it to you, you know, you wouldn't really know what an elephant is until you actually saw one. So modeling it is, is important, especially many of these business owners never worked in larger companies hmm. and so aren't used to building a team, aren't used to building a structure. Um, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wrote actually my most recent book, the Masterpreneur Playbook. Uh, I'll take a second to do a commercial and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how to do this, um, you know, get your second IC to IC and also be able to create the leadership team you need to achieve your goals for the business. So we'll take a second break and um, look at the Masterpreneur Playbook. The best sports teams have a proven playbook. Everyone should have one. We've got one for you because there are so many things you need to know as a business owner. Many business owners work longer and harder for less money than if they had a job because they are on the wrong path. Break that cycle with the Masterpreneur Playbook, a five-step business growth plan that addresses the challenges that business owners face going from working in their business to working on their business. Hello, my name is Andrew Frazier, a business growth pro and CFO. The Masterpreneur Playbook incorporates proven strategies for successfully growing your business that I discovered during my personal journey. Is there any reason you wouldn't want to accelerate the growth of your business, make more money, and have more free time? Of course you would. Don't hesitate. Visit www.spprou.com to download a complimentary copy. This is my most recent. It's not even available yet. Oh, it's not? Um, okay. okay. The Masterpreneur Playbook. Okay. Um, and really, you know, we talked about mm -hmm. is there's five steps yeah. to growing your business. Yeah. And you know, really laying out what those steps are, but not only what the steps are, how do you transition through them? And, you know, each stage, you have 
certain things, there's a certain challenge that you have to overcome. Right. There's a certain goal you have to achieve. Right. There's a certain role you have as a business owner. Right. There's a certain structure that you need to have within your business to support um, that role and move into the next role. So each step, you know, I lay out what those things are. Wonderful. Because each one of those yep. has a key skill that you have to have as, as the business owner. You have to evolve and continually learn or you're going to get stuck. You can only go as far as you're prepared to take it. All right. Welcome back to Leadership Live. I'm here with Neil Livingstone, and we're talking small business. Um, we have a great conversation about, um, you know, why a 2IC, a second in command, is key, but also just developing your whole leadership team, developing your organization in a way that it can be a high-performing organization. And only you as the owner and the leader can do this. So, um it's important for you to um, get help if you need it. Um, you know, definitely, you know, this may be something new for you. Um, you know, get guidance. You know, Neil's worked with a lot of business owners. I've worked with a lot. Um, and, you know, work with someone who understands what you're doing. Um, but, you know, in this, um, you know, I, I like to add, recommend people read books as part of their development process. I don't know if you have any books or any any things that you know homework that that you you, you give the business owners you work with. But you know, what types of, of tools and learning resources do you try and have them take advantage of? Yeah, uh, Andrew, I love books as well. I've got a whole bookshelf of of them. <laughs> Um, I'm always reading at least one. Um, and I will point people to um, some key books. Um, depends on their situation. The other thing I, I am is I'm a, a Grant Cardone licensee. So I have access to all of Grant Cardone's uh, online courses, which are money, mindset, um, sales, marketing. So I point people in the direction of courses that I think will help them as well. Um, I think when you, I find that successful people or people that I can help the most are people that are keen to learn. Um, and a lot of business owners have that mindset, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. So definitely learning is a prerequisite because, you know, you have to evolve. And you can't do that if you, you don't learn and develop. Um, I think one of the key books that I, I have people read is um, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Because, you know, it's about relationships. And if you can't develop good relationships, you're not going to be able to lead effectively. Um, so... Um, you know, so so definitely, you know, that's you know one of of several things, but um, you know, that's all always key. So now, say I bring a two IC in, um, what do I need to do different? Um, what what do you mean, Andrew? Um, well, you know, before before you you bring in a Two IC, you were probably doing most of the things that the two I, you want the two IC to do, or at least the two I, the most of the things that the two IC should be doing. Um, yeah. But many times, you know, it's hard for a business owner to change their habits because they're just so used to just doing those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the two IC, the number one thing that a good two IC will do well. Um, is to recruit, train, and onboard people. They are the heart and soul of the business. They are uh, intuitively social people, um, and they're good with people, and people intuitively like them. I'm thinking right now of my father. 
my father worked in a toy shop, but he was also uh, a singer and a comedian. Um, <laughs> so an extrovert. He, he, he was fantastic with people. I've never met anyone in my life that did not like my father. Um, uh, so you, you're looking for that as the number one quality in your 2IC. And sometimes business owners are also have those people skills, but what they don't have sometimes is the time to uh, invest in the, the recruitment, the onboarding and the training to do a proper job of it. Okay, so typically the first thing that the 2IC will do will take that over and invest the right amount of time. Uh, now, if you're a small business with, you know, 10 or less employees, your 2IC, like I said a little bit earlier, doesn't have to be a full-time person, doesn't have to be someone that commands a very high salary. They just have to be good with people. So you can bring someone in for two or three days a week, even just during school hours, and that's probably they're going to spend more time on the people side of the business than the business owner has to, to spend on the, on the side. So that's why even in that situation, um, you'll see an almost immediate results because someone that's good with people is spending the right amount of time <laughs> building and building the team. Um, so it, it's just a matter of uh, in each situation um, working out what the budget is, what time is required, and also working out what, what are the nine channels that you want to go out and do some recruitment in, what people you need, where you're going to find them, et cetera. Okay. Okay. No, it's interesting. I actually, my, my dad did magic. Uh, okay. <laughs> and he was really good with people as well because, you know, you have to build rapport with the crowd and, and he made it fun. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, some people have that skill, some people don't, but that makes a huge difference when you're building a team and building relationships because, yeah. you know, people have to know, like, and trust you. And sometimes the business owners are a little bit, um, it's a little difficult for them to open up as much. That's right. Um, so. and, and typically they're, they're better at getting customers to know, like, and trust them than their employees. Yes. You know? yep. so, um, it's definitely a skill and it can mm -hmm. be learned. You know, you don't have to be a natural at it. Um, everything's a skill and everything can be learned, but people just start at different points. You know, depending on who you are, you might be starting at a, a, a more naturally strong place than others. Uh, but if you really want quick wins, finding a 2IC that is good at this uh, will absolutely um, springboard you quicker than doing it yourself, particularly if you don't have the time to do it properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, you talk about, the two I see managing down, but it's also very important for them to manage up because that's probably where they get their most challenges. Um, and um, so is there anything you work on, have them work on in terms of either two I see managing up or, building the, the relationship between the two IC and, and the business owner. Yeah, the relationship between the business owner and the two IC is just so, so critical. You know, um, a two IC can have great people skills like we've been talking about, but if they don't get on with the business owner, uh, that's a big problem. Um, and typically, you'll say so you're looking for someone with really good communication skills and some maturity. Um, if you go back into history and look at all the famous people that do have two ICs, you can just tell there's a special uh, relationship, there's a special bond between the those those two people. Um, you know, the business owner really sees the value in that person. The two IC really likes and trusts the business owner and sees the skills that they bring to the business, and it's just a great partnership. You know. So they complement each other, not just in skill set, but in, um, you know, uh, communication, in, in in personality. Um, so, yeah, it, it's super important in terms of the two I see managing up. Um, 
when I when I when I work with people, I will I will help find the two I see, um, and then you know when that two two I see person comes on board, you know it's a it's a, it's it's actually a little triangle. There's there's me, there's the two I see, and there's the business owner, uh, and I really help uh, make sure that there's a, a great bridge between the two, you know, the business owner and and the two I see, and that's all about communication and communication. Uh, will build like it like and trust um, and and then you typically need to go through um, a, a key event in the business you know so either good or bad uh, and that will also bring the business owner and the two I see closer together hopefully and if that if that happens then that will really bond them and 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 drive them and give them confidence that, that as a team um, they can take the business forward, and it is like a triangle. You, you you start with the business owner and making sure that they're invested and understand how important leadership is. Then you put the two OC in place, and then you go around to each part of your business. Um, you know, be it you know finance, uh, be it marketing, be it administration, be it customer support, um, whatever whatever they are in your business, and systematically finding. A quality person and, and placing them uh, and you never get it right every time uh, so it's a journey um, uh, but you just need to keep at it and um, if you do keep at it um, and you've got that triangle there and it's solid at the top with the, the owner and the two I see you will build a good team okay all right no, that, that's great um I like what you said about kind of forming the triangle and how yeah. you help the, the business owner because many times that can be the difference. Um, mm. You know, I actually came in to an organization as the 2IC, and it's one of the most challenging roles you can have, mm. especially if there was never a 2IC before because many times a business owner doesn't really know what to do with you. And the business owner has relationships with everybody else. So a lot of times they'll go around you, but <laughs> you just don't the other people, which sort of undermines what you're doing. So you have to have really good people skills um, to, to manage that effectively. But at the end of the day, it can only work if the CEO wants it to work. Uh, That's true. And is willing to um to to change and make the environment what it needs to be able to support it the uh, uh, two IC. So um so yeah no I mean definitely you know I think we, we covered a lot of good stuff. Um you know um uh, had some good comments and um you know really shared some valuable stuff. So first you know, I appreciate you taking time. I did busy schedule to come come join me today and share your expertise. Um, and um, anything you want to share before we go, I'm going to put your website and your LinkedIn. Actually, what I like to have is um, since we talked about so many things, if you can think about three things you want to leave people with that they should focus on um in terms of being able to bring in and develop uh, a a, the leadership team and two ic that they need mm. yeah so i'm not sure if there's three but i'll just do a few <laughs> um there's a saying and uh, this is uh, something that a lot of people have heard but it, it's so true in that um in terms of where you're at in terms of uh your skill set and uh your success you are the average, um, you will be the average of the five people that you spend the most time with in your life. And that, that's uh, in business and, uh, you know, personal. So who you surround yourself with uh, is absolutely the number one building block to success. Um, so that is why 2IC, the concept of 2IC is so, so important, but it's everybody. Um, it's using a CFO or a coach. Um, by the way, 
I've also been 2IC for a lot of businesses because typically the CFO is the 2IC. Um, so that's the number one thing that I, 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 I try and uh, make people understand. And people intuitively get that. And when you look at the truly successful people, they all do it. That would be the number one thing I'd leave people with. Okay. All right. So, so relationships matter and who's around you matters a lot. Okay. Matt. All right. No, yep. great. Great. You know, great info. Um, thanks again. Hang on. Um, I'm going to close things out and then we'll chat for a minute after if that's okay. Cool. So, you know, once again, um, another great episode. I appreciate Neil coming in and sharing his expertise and, um, you know, having the two IC is so important if you're going to grow your business and create something that can run without you because who do you think is going to be the one that's running it without you your two IC so um you have to develop them so that they can you know operate in your stead in the way that you need them to so um once again thanks for joining in um you know as you know each week we have a great guest a great topic Next week, we have Gene Bohinsky, and he's going to be talking about doubling down in the downturn. So double down in the downturn. So, um, you know, as you know, we're facing potential recession and uncertainty. Um, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be pulling back. Many people, their natural reaction is to pull back. But, you know, as a smaller business, this creates opportunities and you can really take market share and, and grow your business significantly if you're proactive, if you're creative and if you're flexible and invest during challenging times. So very much looking forward to chatting with Gene next week to talk about that further uh, and hope you can join us as well. So thanks for, for joining us tonight. Uh, Thanks for your great comments and feedback. And I look forward to having you join us next week as well. So thanks again. At the end, and just always remember at the end of the day, the more that you know, the faster and more successfully your business is going to grow. Thank you for listening to Leadership Live at 805, talking small business. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com.